Uh, they were told this weekend. They had um, an individual meeting with both of them, and um, we just talked about uh, what direction we were going to go. And it's it's a um, relatively difficult decision because they're both so good. They both had great camps. They both could start here. Um, and at the end of the day, on, on Saturday, somebody has to run out there first, and so that'll be Drake. And uh, Jacoby will prepare the same way this week as if he's starting, and he'll be ready to play, and, and uh, he may have to. So we'll, we'll, let, we'll let the game go the way it goes and, and see, see what the situation provides. Matt, good morning, and many specifics about that, but can you at least tell us uh, one or two things both of them have done a lot better since fall camp start where they are now? Uh, well, that's easy. I mean, both of them are we, – we really spent – and as much as this sounds like coach speak, at quarterback, you want to be consistently efficient. You know, we, we need to be consistent. And, um, and we want to be efficient on every play. And so that's, that's something I harp on every day. It's something we talk about. It's something that I uh, earmarked for them as an emphasis. So if you want to win the job, we need continuity when you're out there. We need to move the ball when you're out there. We need to score when you're out there. And, and really that comes from making really good decisions consistently. And I, and I tell them all the time, it's very hard. If you get 80 plays in a ball game, it's very hard to do something consistently 80 straight times. And I've said that before. It's very, very – if it was easy, we'd all do it, and it's not. And so to go out there and execute our offense, um, drive after drive after drive, practice after practice, all game on a Saturday, it's hard to do that without making mistakes. And when you have a lot of talent in the room, and I really need to include Connor Harrell is really – very, very intelligent, very talented, and he has a bright future ahead of him. So we've got, we have three right now that are, we're, we're battling for a while and we're getting reps, I should say, and we're doing it at a real high level. I asked, I asked Drake to be more, I wanted him to clean up some footwork from the spring, to answer your question, um, and we wanted to, to work on being a little bit more accurate with regards to triggering the football faster. And he did that. That was a really a big improvement for him in August camp. We got the ball out sooner because we were making quicker decisions. We cleaned up his footwork so there's no wasted movement. Um, and he's a much better passer because of it. Um, and he's doing a much better job, too, of just being consistent with regards to decision-making in the run game, decision-making with RPOs, decision-making with regards to protection and, and pass progression. You know, jo Jacoby, I think uh, we asked him the same thing from a mental standpoint. Right, it was the same charge for both of them. Um, he threw the ball extremely well in the spring. You know, I wanted him to do a better job of run reading and doing some things off of pull throws on the run game, and and he did. And you know, it's it's hard. Like picking a starter between these two is like choosing between my nine-year-old daughter and my eleven-year-old daughter. It's just you know, it's hard to do, and because they both right now could start and and run this offense and run this team, and so. We have our direction. We're happy with the improvement of both of them. We feel like we have two very, very good ACC quarterbacks, and we're going to let the game and the season take us where it does. So how do you see that going in game? Like, for example, this, this weekend, Max says that um, Drake's going to come out for, uh, go out first. Like, what happens at what point you bring in Jacoby? How does that kind of look in your eyes as the offensive coordinator and how you kind of juggle the two? It's, it's really no different than any other position. I mean, you have, you have, we, have, we have a talented running back room. If a, if a guy is out there and he's hot and he's playing well, we're going to leave him out there. You know, really when a guy is hot, the only time you take him off is when he needs, when he needs a blow. He needs to, you need to just give him a, you know, a, a few plays off so he's fresh. And I don't, I don't know if the approach is any different at quarterback or receiver or tight end or a line. You know, we're going we're to try to play as many as we can at the other positions. We obviously don't want to rotate through at quarterback like you do at some of the other positions because of the nature of the position. But... Um, you know, Coach said it. I listened to him, you know, at the end of the press conference. He wants guys that are going to move the offense and are going to put the ball in the end zone. Um, and so if you have one struggling to do that, you'll probably see the other one. Is it fair to say that it's still open? It's fair to say that Drake will take the field first and then we're going to let the game dictate what we do after that. Okay. So how did um, Jacoby take the news when you performed? You know, uh, I've known Jacoby for four and a half years now, you know, and uh, – and I've known Drake for over two, so you have relationships with these guys. So you, you, uh, it was hard for me. It's always hard for me. Um, I said in the spring, and I said going into the camp, probably we don't, pro we probably don't have to make this decision because they're going to decide it. 
And I was wrong because the two of them did very well. And we ultimately had to come down to a, you know, a day this weekend where we had to make a decision and we had to tell the two of them. I think both of them uh, took it very professionally. You know, you, you thought one would be more excited and one would be more uh, disappointed. And it really wasn't either. You know, they both just kind of took it professionally. And I think they're both going to prepare this week the same way. I think they're going to continue to support each other like they have for the spring and the, and the summertime. And I think they'll both be ready each weekend as we play and we'll play as needed. Mac mentioned that all three tight ends are effectively on the blue team um, for week zero. Do you envision using a lot of multiple tight end packages just to get all of them on the field? There's, there's no question they're on the blue team, and there's no question that all three will play. Uh, Coach Lilly does a fantastic job at rolling through them based on situation and need and, and uh, based on what the defense is doing. You know, and then, you know, we have some thoughts with regards to Kamari and John Copenhaver and Bryson Nesbitt. So some of the, some of the plays that we call, not necessarily earmarked for those guys, but we're going to try to lean towards their strengths while they're out there. Well, yeah. Sam was in the top ten in rushing in the ACC last year. How much do you anticipate it? I mean, will we see a continuance of the quarterback position running as much, or do you feel like you want to scale that back some? So in, in this offense, really, you want the quarterback to be a great distributor of the football. And I talked to Jacoby and, and Drake about that yesterday. And so you, you don't really want – in an air raid offense or uh, even with a power running game, you don't want um, your quarterback to be a thousand yard rusher. Last year, that was a, you know, that was a necessity. You know, we lost two thousand yard rushers. We replaced one with Ty Chandler. Um, there, there wasn't another guy that, that we felt was playing at that level last year and it became Sam Hell. It's also something that we do well. Um, I will say this, when our quarterbacks do run this year because it's a part of our offense, uh, we're not going to stay up and lower our shoulder and do those type of things. I mean, you know, Sam was a warrior for us last year, and he did the things he felt like he needed to do to win the ball game. Um, and, and he gave us, you know, 800 and something yards rushing along with the rest of, of his production for, from the offensive standpoint last year. But uh, I want, and I've said this to them numerous times this camp, I want Jacoby and Drake to get what they can and then get down and get up. We want to live to play another play. And so having depth, is good. It provides us with the ability to do a bunch of things, but I want us to stay healthy as well. So that might be one difference in the Q run game this year, uh, from you know, different from last season. What have Will Barnes and Spencer Rowland done to be the blue team? And with William in particular, what is different about his game now that maybe wasn't there in the last few years? You know, I brought up consistency with the quarterbacks. That's been the issue with with William, and it's something that I talk to him about regularly. And Coach McNell talks to him about regularly, and I think uh, he's very, very talented. He's an athlete. Um, he can be physical when he wants to be. And um, so really the, the emphasis for him is to continue to improve technique. But I think the number one thing for him is as soon as he is able to, and he's been doing that lately, and we've been happy with where he is in camp, as soon as he is able to lock in from play to play and, and play consistently both in the run game and in pass pro, I think William's going to be a really, really good offensive lineman for us. With regards to Spencer Rollins, he's living in a different world. I mean, he, he played, uh, you know, he played at a different level last year. You know, he played in the Ivy League. And, and uh, so I think he's seeing a different speed in the game right now. And that was an adjustment for him early on. Um, but we're actually very happy with his progress and we like where he is right now. So William and Spencer... Uh, along with Jonathan Adorno over on that side are, are three that we're going to depend on and have had really good camps. So I think we're kind of coming to a place right now where we have some continuity on the offensive line. Is there a plan for Zach to get reps or are you guys still working? Zach has gotten reps with the blue group the entire time, yes. I think right now, you know, he missed a bunch of days, you know, which kind of slowed his development a little bit. But um, right now I think the three that you would see in there on that side – initially would be Spencer Rollins, William Barnes, and Jonathan Adorno. And we've been very happy with Zach's progress. I just think the delay that he had in, in uh, camp here slowed him a little bit. Phil, I just wanted to clarify, um, Mac, I think said you told the quarterbacks today, but you're saying it was this weekend? 
Well, we made the decision this weekend, um, and I actually had a conversation with one late last night and one early this morning. If you for the timeline. Yeah. Talking about the difference maybe in the quarterback run game this year, like just overall, you know, you had Sam for three years every game, you know, the last three years. Like, how do you see your offense maybe being different this year with just a, a new quarterback for the first time in a long time? I mean, it's certainly not going to be like a mirror image of what you guys did with Sam, I guess. Like, what, what do you see this whole thing looking like with someone different back there? Well, really what changes the complexion of the offense, the offense never changes, but the offense is multiple enough to play to the strengths of the guys that we have. You know, we, we brought up the tight end room. There's more depth there. Um, so there's an opportunity, and there's, there's some more athleticism there. So there's an opportunity to do some things at that position maybe that we haven't done a lot of in the past. Um, also, we haven't had the same depth. So when you don't have the same depth, sometimes you're getting into – 20 personnel or, or 10 personnel or you're, you know, you're doing some things to rest those guys. Well, we have three now, so we can really get into whatever we want whenever we want to, and we, we have faith in all three of those guys. Having the depth in the running back room also, you know, that was, that was a luxury that we enjoyed two years ago. Um, not only do we have uh, Michael Carter and Javante Williams, but the one season we had Antonio Williams also. And so that, that gave you an opportunity to keep them fresh and so you were getting the best of those two guys every time they were out there. And I think that'll be the type of world that we live in with the running backs this year because we can get depend on three or four of them. And then at wide receiver, you know, I, there aren't a lot of receivers on scholarship here right now in comparison to where we've been in the past. Uh, but there's a lot more depth at receiver, and a lot of them are a lot closer to, to being contributors for us right now. So I, we probably have a little more depth there than you would think, even though the numbers – you know, on paper, don't necessarily show that. Coach, kind of going up the wide receivers, you mentioned you have a lot of depth there. What are some ways that you can distribute the ball to other receivers other than Downs to sort of free him up as the game's go on? Well, I think as some of the other guys develop, it will make it more difficult to bracket and, 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 and uh, double-team Josh Downs because I think there will be some more established weapons this year. Gavin Blackwell's had a great camp. You'll see him on the field, J.J. Jones. Justin Olson, you've got uh, Kobe Pesor has really taken a huge step since last year. He and Gavin Blackwell have been significantly better this year than they were last year, and they're they're all on the blue team and in the in the fray. And so you'll, you're going to see all of those guys. And I I can't tell you how much because a lot of that's going to be you know if we have a receiver that's really playing well and he's fresh, we're going to leave him out there. If we have a guy that's struggling or can't get off press or is just not, not able to, he's not playing well or doesn't get it done, at least we have some other guys that, that we can go to. And that competition and that depth just allows us to be able to stay fresh in the game and, and utilize more players. I would envision Saturday and just about every week that we would use between 18 and 22 players throughout the offensive rotation in the game. And that's, that's been our goal since we've gotten here. And this will be the first year that we probably hit those numbers. And Coach, kind of sticking with Josh, obviously last year he stepped into a new role uh, being the wide receiver one for your team. What have you seen in his offseason preparation as now he is the alpha? Uh, and how is he sort of leading the other guys? You know, le leading into last season, it was really the same. I mean, he's, he's been pretty much the same. He is an absolute warrior between the whistles. And if anything, uh, we've got to restrain him a little bit. I mean, he, he's probably more in danger of overtraining or overdoing it during the week than he is, you know, not. So he's focused. He's a very intelligent ball player. I think he's learned the game. He's, he's more in, involved in uh, the intellectual part of it. He's more involved in understanding coverages and why and how, you know, defenses are doing things. We're going to continue to move him around. We're going to continue to do some of the things that we did with him last year. Um, I don't know if there's really much of a change. He's been a little bit – he's added a little bit more leadership, especially to the receiver room. Um, and, I, and I think that uh, he's done a good job off the field of helping some of the other younger receivers. Andre Green, has he been everything you expected him to be better? What do you like about him so far? Do you expect to see him figure in there? So Andre is um, very, very strong for a, a freshman who just came off the high school field in December. Um, so physically, he's more prepared maybe than most receivers, I think, to handle the game at this level. So that transition has not been a big issue. Um, 
the transition has just been speed to the game and, and the mental part of it, like most freshmen. And so right now, I think what we're doing is we're still working with him from a mental standpoint, just getting everything down. And it's one thing to know your assignment on the play. It's another thing to know it so well that you're executing it with perfect technique and with knowledge of what they're doing on the defensive side. So he's going through the same learning curve that O'Marion Hampton's going through, George Petway's going through, any of the young guys, especially the young guys that are that are going to play. And it'll be interesting to see how some of them respond this week because camp has been real, but this week everything that, that we lay out there on the field is going to count or not count for Saturday. So it'll be interesting to watch Andre Green and O'Marion and George uh, perform and, and produce and prepare for Saturday's game. So how much he plays, I don't know, but you'll see him on Saturday. You mentioned the running backs. Uh, Coach Brown said DJ Jones is running with the ones now. Behind him, like, how's that competition going? What do you like about that? Who do, we, who do you expect to be like the two or three guy? You said behind who? DJ Jones. Yeah. Backgrounds like he's like so the DJ and Caleb are the two returning staples, right? They know the offense really well. They're both physical. They pass block. Um, effectively they catch the ball out of the backfield real well so they are the the two that are the most they have the most knowledge of the system and they understand you know why we're doing certain things and i think uh they have the experience of dealing with uh the defense when the bullets are flying and then you have omarian and uh, george petway who have been extremely explosive in camp they've made a lot of explosive plays um, they obviously are talented enough they're both going to play you'll see both of them on saturday and um it's, it's just kind of a nice world right now, Ross, to, to be living in a, a running back room right now where you have uh, two guys that can do some things in, in, open, in the open field and you have two guys that we can lean on from a veteran standpoint and all four of them have the ability to make plays. And I think at running back and at receiver, we're, we're going to have to let some guys play and see who responds better than others. And that'll, that'll kind of dictate as the season goes on what the pecking order is going to be in those two rooms. You mentioned the opening camp this week. Can you elaborate on that? What went into what kind of thinking went into deciding to do that this week? Say that again. I, I, I you mentioned the opening camp this week and the way you're grading and everything else. Why are you guys doing that? And um, kind of elaborate on what that actually means in a game week. You said reopening camp? Yeah, you mentioned a second ago the reopening camp with the way your, your marking set this week. Yeah, I'm having, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm really sorry. Reopening camp is with yeah, regards to what? Yeah. Same grade? Same grade? Reopening. Same grade. Maybe I didn't hear it right. Yeah, maybe. Uh, reopening, I'm not sure what, what you're referring to. Sorry. Yeah. Phil, so what, uh, do you want to go back in one, AJ? No, no. What, what were you wanting? What were well, you asking? You would sense I'm not going to camp this week and practice this week. It's sort of like reopening camp. That's what it sounded like what you said as far as grading. How you're still grading the guys this week. Because Mac even said, with respect to quarterback, that if Drake has a bad practice, then maybe Jacoby steps forward. So it's not like you're that. Is that something Max said? So here's what I would say. We had camp, right? We're going back into this week to get ready for Florida A&M. And a lot of the positions have been decided. Uh, how much they play has not been decided. Who starts at some of these positions has not been decided at every position. And so we're, even though camp is over and you'd like to have all that stuff wrapped up by the end of camp, we have three or four more days to prepare, and I think we'll get a lot of, uh, there'll be a lot of input here from our staff with regards to how we handle the guys in the tight end room, the receiver room, the running back room, based on you know how they're understanding the game plan and how they're practicing this week. And so um, as difficult as it was to make a decision at quarterback, it's a good problem to have that we have to make some of those same decisions at receiver and at running back. So. I guess what you're referring to, and I don't remember saying it, but reopening camp really to me is we are still evaluating some of our guys. Everything has not been secured and, and defined. And I like that because our guys are competing to, to try and find a spot where they can contribute on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. I wasn't giving you a hard time. I just didn't know what you're asking. I want to answer your question. Yeah. Well, you know, there's what competition does is it breeds uh, an edge a little bit, a sharpness, because 
Uh, you don't want them looking behind themselves. At quarterback, it's a little bit different because you want continuity at that position. But at running back and at receiver and at tight end, we're going to roll through, as I said, hopefully 18 to 22 players anyway. So they all understand already. We have, we have a very team first attitude in our locker room. I think the guys on offense all know that we're going to share the wealth. And then that's what I'm talking about when I say our quarterbacks need to be great distributors. We want to get the ball to our running backs. We want to get the ball to our receivers. We're obviously going to get the ball to our slots. And the tight ends are a big factor in, in that whole equation this year also. So there's going to be games where some guys have bigger statistical games than others. And I think we all understand that if they have to defend all of them, if you've got to defend all five skill guys on the field and the quarterback's doing a good job of just uh, w without discrimination, distributing the ball to each of them, then the defense has to defend the entire field and they have to defend all of our personnel. And, and th from, from a philosophy standpoint, that's where we want to be offensively. You know, last year we didn't feel like we had five equal weapons at all of those skill positions. And that means it increased the workload for Sam Howell. This year I think we, we are uh, in a much better place in the receiver room with a lot of the same people. And, and uh, you know, I think some of these freshmen that have come in have added some playmaking ability and some explosiveness that we lacked last year. And so um, our quarterbacks have more weapons. So if we do our job, you know, in a perfect world, I'd like them all to have three or four catches and they all have 15 to 18 carries and everybody gets involved and everybody gets in the end zone. And um, that, that makes us the most difficult to defend. And that's really the world that we're trying to live in. Cool. You've been coaching Colin plays a long time and coaching quarterbacks a long time. With Drake and just respect to him being named the starter, what sorts of nuggets of info are you telling him heading into this this first start? Like, what did you tell him when you told him he was going to be first up? Like, what little advice are you giving him? So I, you know, I think that it's a little different right now with where Jacoby and Drake are. You know, when we decided to start Sam, Sam had been on campus for half a year. You know, these guys have been here for a while. They have the advantage of having been behind Sam and learned from Sam and watched Sam, and they've had um, countless more reps than Sam had in, a, in a, uh, you know, along their trek here to prepare for playing. So Jacoby and Drake are much further along the learning curve than Sam was when he started as a true freshman. Um, and I think there's, there's a calm there, there's a confidence, and uh, you know, what I told them both is that we're now in season. They're playing quarterback at the University of North Carolina. Um, the spotlight's going to be brighter now. The attention's going to be a lot more uh, intense. I think uh, people want to hear what they have to say now. And that stuff takes up a lot of time. And so my only advice to both of them was the true trick of, of doing this thing professionally and doing it the right way is to block out the outside noise and continue to play and practice and prepare with the edge that they've had. And they gotta be able to lock in and focus and practice the same way that they were when they were competing for the job. And that sounds easy, but that's not easy to do. And I think these guys are mature enough to do it. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to what the next few weeks, you know, how they play out with these two guys. Phil, so, so the game is a lot different than when Mark May was quarterback in here, but sure. given kind of the pedigree, quarterback pedigree, is there, in what ways do you see that kind of manifested in Drake? Is there anything that, you know, you feel like he kind of inherited that goes into maybe the leadership that he carries in the quarterback? Well, to, to know the May family is, I would say that um, the three things that come to mind initially in my mind is, uh, just a very high character family, so that's what you're getting out of Drake. Um, it's it. Drake's very intelligent, and you know he, he, Luke was obviously a very intelligent basketball player. His dad was, um, you know, he played quarterback here and did a good job. And they and, and and I know we talked to him last night as well. And you know he's he didn't jump for joy when we told him either. You know we said. Uh, we said that uh, your son's going to start at, at FAMU, and I just wanted to inform you of that. And, um, you know, he kind of took it the same way Drake did. It was professionally, you know, and, and it was um, with some poise. And so, you know, the other thing to finish answering your question is, is uh, this is an extremely competitive family, and Drake is as competitive as anybody I've coached. You know, I, I told him last night, late last night when we met, I said, uh, 
one of the things that I remember was on a, on a recruiting uh, weekend where he was hosting. We're at Coach Brown's house, and he was there to host and to help us recruit. But he could not get away from the ping pong table. He was competing, and he's sweating, and he's dripping all over Coach's floor, and he's, you know, he's working on serves, and he, like, he just lost it. He could not get away and go back to recruiting at that point. And I just remember just really realizing, if you said, I'll get to the doorknob over there before you are, he's going to. He's going to beat you as, as much as he can to get there. He, he, was, he wanted to win every ping pong game. He wanted everything that he does. He's just ultra competitive. And that's the way he plays the game of football. And that's what you want in your quarterback. And Jacoby's that way. Sam was that way. So I, I have and we have been really blessed here to have some great quarterbacks that, that have some of those qualities. I don't know that you can be a lead at this position without them. And so we, we've got an excellent room right now, and I think it bodes well for our team this fall. All right, man. Switch it up. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Sorry I couldn't hear you, brother. I, I just, I don't know. Part of it's me, and then I just didn't get the question at first. Well, we are uh, ready for game week, right? So uh, shoot away. What, what, what questions do you have? <laughs> uh, they're probably tired of it, and I, there's some every day. But um, no, just uh, we kind of have this motto: is it's D W W D. It's we do what we do, right? So that's that's kind of been the the mantra, I guess you could say, uh, for the entire fall camp. Is you know we are who we are. We don't have to create, and uh, we don't have to try to be uh, you know something different every week. We just do what we do, we be who we are. So our game plans going into every game, and this is a, this is a great starting point for us, uh, is to go out there and, and just um, be simple. Uh, you know, uh, offenses tend to create issues for you, so as long as we're simple and we know all the things that we can do to adjust, uh, we feel like we'll be in a good place. But I think this is a good starting point for our defense because this offense does challenge you. It's got some tempo. Uh, it does a lot of things, actually, that are similar to our offense, uh, which uh, causes problems, obviously. So we just got to go out there. We got to execute. We'll be simple. Uh, and uh, it'll be a good opening game for us. You haven't had a game in a while. It's been quite a while since you've been in Wisconsin in game. What are your thoughts now that you're back in one? Is it something where it's just old hat, or is there a little bit different, maybe, uh, Motion for you? Any kind of thoughts that are a little bit different now? You weren't sure you were going to get back in. Yeah, that's true. It's been five years since I've been in this position on the game week, right? And uh, it's uh, it's been interesting. I've been so in the grind with fall camp that I feel like I'm still in fall camp. So this is kind of the first you know week that I've really entered into the game week mode. Uh, but it's interesting. It's kind of like fall camp was, and kind of like spring ball. Uh, everything just kind of comes back to you, you know what I mean, on how to how to prepare and, and your mindset and, and how you think. Uh, it's really interesting because this is the part of football that I loved, right? Like being able to uh, game plan, being able to uh, uh, strategically, you know, uh, let a plan unfold and, and give it to the guys and watch us work it. And then, you know, hopefully on Friday, on Saturday night, the, the game plan unfolds. So. Uh, challenging, for sure. Uh, exciting, because I haven't done it in a long time. Uh, but uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. What about the excitement of seeing what these guys are going to do on the field, especially a lot of the young, very talented ones you have? That's what I'm excited about. To be honest with you, I mean, it's great. It's challenging. We love the X and O part. We love the strategy. Uh, all of those things. I cannot wait to see these guys play. And so this will be the first time I've seen them play in game conditions, right? And I want them to be excited. I want them to be uh, confident. I want them to, you know, feel like, you know, they're they're great with the plan and they understand the plan and that we just go out and play and we let our talent take over. So that's kind of the name of the game. But I think probably the most exciting part for me personally uh, is is to be able to watch these guys play and go out and execute. How much do the defensive coaches in this case, you know, 
uh, involved in deciding who, who is a starter on the offensive side. They ask for your input on what you've seen out of the quarterback battle um, or what you've seen out of wide receivers. Do you guys play any role in what happens on that side of the ball? No, we, we stay in our lane with that. <laughs> we stay in our lane with that. The head coach and, and the coordinators kind of talk about that on their side of the ball. Obviously, uh, you know, we see them every day, so, you know, we have a very good idea of the talent level, uh, but that's, uh, that's above my pay grade. Coach, the quarterback seems like there's been some injuries in camp. You know, Duck has been in and out for a couple of years now. How do you feel about the corners? I know it's a big year for Grimes and Duck and transfer. How do you feel about that group? Uh, I think you're right. I think you hit it on the head. It, it, it's a very big year for these guys. I think this is, uh, this is the time for them to step up to the plate and, and take their game to the next level. And we've seen signs of that in fall camp. Uh, you know, you mentioned Storm. Uh, hopefully that, you know, he's back to a place right now where health-wise we're, we're smart and judicious about how and when we use him, but we feel good that he's, that he's in a, physically in a good place. Um, but the whole secondary, you know, there's a lot of guys back there that have played a lot of football. And we expect them, we expect them to play well. We expect them to tackle well. We expect uh, them to execute, um, you know, not give up explosive plays, things of that nature. Uh, we expect that of those guys because they have played a lot of football. So it's not just the corners. It's not just, you know, we have the nickel slash star. We have the corners. We have the safeties that, that have played a lot of football. Uh, and they all have to play better. Uh, they all have to communicate better. They all have to execute better. They know that. Uh, they all have to tackle better. The problem being back there is that if they make a mistake, everybody sees it. It's different than a defensive tackle, and they know that. They know, uh, you know, what comes with that position. So when the ball breaks because somebody misfit something up front, they have to make the tackle and drag it down. Uh, if there's a complicated route that the offense has created because of a formation or a motion or there's communication that is required right now, they have to get that done back there. So uh, the level of execution back there has to be, uh, it has to be huge and it has to be uh, spot on and they're gonna have to execute. So uh, I expect them uh, in game one uh, to, you know, uh, communicate at a high level and execute at a high level. That's what their jobs are. And they've done a really good job of that at camp. Corners, safeties, and our nickels, all of them. Is there a leader in that group, in that secondary group, that's kind of stepped up as the vocal communicator, set the defense, that guy? There's a lot of better, it's a lot of seniors. There, there are guys that have, that, have, that have played a lot of football, like Geo Biggers. Geo is the first one that comes to mind when it comes to guys that really understand and, and, and you know they get the whole big picture and you know they do a great job of communicating out there. He's not the only one, uh, but he's the one that stands out to me uh, just because he's a really smart you know he's a really smart guy. His dad's a football coach. He kind of gets it, but he's been around a lot of football. Uh, but he would be one that I would say that. If we're looking for a guy to take charge and make sure that we understand communication and checks, you know, he would be the first one we'd look at. Gene, it seems like uh, Mac is expecting Ra Ra to play a, lo a lot this year at linebacker. I know you weren't here last season. How have you seen him take the, the jump, you know, quote unquote, from freshman to sophomore? Really proud of Ra Ra. Really, really proud of him. I think he's put in the work. Uh, I think he's tried to put in the work to gain some weight. That's kind of always been his Achilles heel. He's probably one of the fastest linebackers in college football, and it shows on the field. He plays fast. When he knows exactly what his job description is, he knows where he's going, he sees the ball, he gets there really, really fast. And I think he's done a great job of, of uh, improving in the 20-some-odd days that we've practiced. I um, think he sees the game faster now, and we fully expect him to play. We, you know. Uh, I told Cedric Gray the other day, I think he played, you know, almost close to 900 snaps last year, and that's not the goal. The goal is not to play, and, and I'm not even sure if that included special teams, but that's not the goal. Our goal is to make sure that in our front seven, everyone on our defense, but certainly in the front seven, uh, that's linebackers included, we expect to be able to play too deep. That's what we want to be able to do because offenses strain and challenge you defensively these days by running 80 and 90 plays a game. And that's just the nature of the speed and the tempo and things of that that you see. So, you know, one, one linebacker playing 900 plays is not, that's not optimal for us. So 
he knows that, and he's, I think he's done a great job. So we fully expect for him to get you know, significant snaps in every game. And is it kind of the same deal with Keyshawn um, on the defensive line? Uh, yeah, 100%. The defensive line's a very unique animal right now because I feel like we've got really, really good depth. We've got some young guys that need to keep coming along. You mentioned Keyshawn, he would be one of them. Travis Shaw would be one of them. There's just some young guys that we feel like have earned the right to, to get reps, but they have to understand their role. Right now they're role players because they've got a lot of guys in front of them that have played a lot of football. And that's been the great thing about these guys is that they've accepted their role. They know and understand who's in front of them, why they're in front of them. That's where they're trying to get to uh, and in the meantime, we expect to, it, both in practice and games, uh, incrementally bring them along uh, because we expect them to be significant contributors uh, this year. Coach, kind of going off that point, also tying in the secondary, um, as someone who has missed time the past couple of years, Storm Duck is a player that uh, Coach Brown said has sort of been passed by a few other people just because he hasn't really seen the field. What have you seen from him in sort of his climb to get back to the top of the depth chart uh, in that secondary group? Well, Storm's a very talented guy. He's, he's, got the, he's got the physical and mental makeup to be a really, really good defensive back. Uh, obviously, the health issue has been the reason. Uh, but he cares about football. He loves football. Um, he's grinded. He's grinded to come back. Uh, it's been an up and down uh, battle for him. But as a football player, I think he's got really good football IQ. Uh, I think the game means a lot to him, and, and he's talented. So uh, there's nothing he's missing except for time participating, right? I mean, that's really it. So uh, if we're judicious about how we use him and uh, we, you know, we, we rotate him enough right now where we can just bring him along at the right pace and he can stay healthy, um, he's going to be a significant uh, contributor to us, and we expect him to be. And maybe not at just one position, maybe multiple positions, because he's smart enough to learn that. So we're, we're kind of bringing him along in that regard as well. Chief, I know this certainly is not the end point. This is the beginning point. Uh, but from the start of spring practice to now, what sort of journey has this been installing the defense, getting these guys in places you want them, the ups, the downs, sideways probably. Like, what has what this uh, journey been like just to get to this point to game week? Do you think, and how do you think, how have you seen things improve? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, it's, been, it's been really, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Because, you know, when somebody comes in new, whether you're a head coach or whether you're a coordinator or whether you're a position coach, right? Everything boils down to trust. And, you know, so I don't know how long I've been here now, eight months. I think one of the first things I told these guys is they, they don't know me. Therefore, they shouldn't trust me because they don't know me and vice versa, right? So you work eight months uh, to build trust. That's both coaches to players and, and uh, players to coaches, right? So... Uh, there's a lot of ups and downs in between that, that go into that. And I feel really, really good about the trust factor that both we have in the players and the players have in us. And I had a long meeting with them yesterday talking about the ups and downs of the seasons and, you know, uh, how we respond to things and, you know, what, what are we going to be like if we're down 21 in a game? What are we going to be like if we're up 21 in a game? Because it's not about... It's, it's, it's all about a standard. Um, and I've said this before, it's standards, not circumstances, right? We can't play to circumstances, we gotta play to standards. And that's easier said than done. But it takes a lot of trust between both coaches and players and players and coaches. Uh, and I think going into this game, I think we've got that. I think we've all got that. And we're, we'll still grow together. The journey is just beginning, like you said, and there's gonna be a lot of things in there, a lot of adversity, a lot of ups and downs. Um, all those things that go with it, but as long as we trust each other, which that's really what the eight-month journey's been about, uh, then we're going to be fine. Coach, you said you're excited. Are you nervous at all to get back out there? Are, like, are there any nerves the first game? Never. 
No, I'm nervous about not being ready for practice tomorrow because I'm on a time crunch, right? Like, that's the only thing I'm worried about right now. But as far as being nervous about the game. It's uh, like jitters in terms of just like getting sacked. Right, yeah. right. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Can't say that I won't feel that way Saturday morning when I wake up or even maybe even Friday. But, um, you know, right now, I, like I said, right now I kind of feel like I'm still in fall camp mentality, you know, kind of getting ready. I think near the end of the week when everything's you know starts slowing down and the game plans in and everything's been worked um i think i might feel a little bit different but right now i'm still kind of in fall camp mindset and i know you'll be up in the booth uh, how's the communication going to work with you and your coaches i, I imagine charles Warren will have a big role on the sideline in communicating with you to the players Can you kind of break that yes down? yes it, it, he'll have a huge role all the coaches will we have a, a very um uh organized uh, everybody's got, you know, the structure of everything. Everybody knows that everybody's got specific jobs that they're doing, but the direct communication on a down-in, down-out basis will be between me and Coach Warren. Uh, it'll be between everybody, but there'll be a lot of, you know, dialogue going on uh, between him and I. Obviously, we've been together for, you know, a couple of years, so we, we understand that. And we have, by design, uh, done this probably five or six times between spring ball and now just to make sure that we're all on the same page with how we're organized. So that's always by design too. We made sure we got three three of those in the spring, I think, uh, and we got three of them in, in the fall camp. So we've had done it six times just to make sure that the, because people don't realize how much communication and organization has to go on between getting information, getting it down to the players, making sure that everybody's good, making corrections. Um, and it's got to be a really clear, succinct way to do that, and I feel very good about that. Is there a position coach up with you? There is a mainly the younger coaches that are up there giving me information. Uh, most of the coaches are down on the field. Jay, how close would you say the defensive line is to, to say, a prototype of what you consider to be a stalwart defense in terms of the talent, the depth, the experience? Uh, I'll be able to tell you more after game one, but I feel like uh, we have a chance to be really good up front. And I feel like, and I've told them since I've got here, and I, I tell them that daily, that if, if, we, if you guys don't play at a high level, we don't have a defense. We've got huge frames. Uh, we've got guys that love football. We have depth to rotate them. Uh, so our expectation is that they play really, really well. Are we, have we arrived? No. Uh, but I think they've come a long way in, in the eight months as far as how we want them to play and in the demeanor uh, that they need to approach every game with. So we're getting there. Uh, been really, really pleased with how they've you know come on and progressed. They love ball, uh, and there's a lot of them. And they got, like I said, they got big frames. So we expect them to get in there and, and muddy some things up, and, and also get a, get a pass rush without having to bring a f uh, fifth or sixth rusher. That's their job. They got to get pass rush for all four of them. So that's kind of been the that that's been the, I guess the, the message, for eight months. Phil said that range for offense that he can throw to you guys in the rotation that he can anticipate playing. Do you have a range, a number on defense? As far as the number of guys we expect to rotate on a pretty regular basis. Well, I would say right now there's there's a lot. You know, I'd say right now, uh, just off the top of my head, there's probably 16 or 17 guys that we consider to be, you know, uh, on the blue team, which is, you know, we don't, we could trot them out in the game at any point. Doesn't matter where the ball is, doesn't matter if it's on the goal line, in the low red zone, backed up. We feel like if we called 17 or 18, you know, 16 to 18 guys out there right now, we wouldn't we wouldn't skip a beat. And then the ones that are not quite to that point, they're coming along, but, you know, they, they need reps. They need more work. They need more time uh, just to, you know, uh, get the experience that they need to, to really be considered to be in that group.